Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the session I have over here for the remix of the song Fries and Cream by Froya. If you want to listen to the entire remix, I've entered the link in the video description so you can click on that. If you want to download the song, there's a SoundCloud link and you can get the song for free from there. And I would definitely recommend you to go check out the original song by Froya and I'll have the link for that too in the description. Alright, so this was done in Ableton Live as you can see. Um, now I wouldn't say this is a 100% complex Stro remix, but it does have some of those elements in and I've definitely added a little bit of my own flavor to it. The original song is an indie song, has a very acoustic and organic vibe to it, so I try to keep a little bit of that as well. So obviously most complex Stro artists don't have that particular sound, so it's slightly different from there but I'm sure you can learn something from this. So I have markers over here to indicate the different sections. So there's the intro here, then of course the drop, and then the verse. This is quite common in uh, dubstep and complex row tunes where you straight away go into the drop and then the tune starts after that. There's a chorus. Um, electronic music or complex row dubstep doesn't really have a chorus, but this song has a very strong chorus, so I decided to keep that in there then the drop repeats, and then there's another verse, the chorus repeats for a couple of times, there's a bridge, and this mini, it's, uh, I think it's a mini drop I called it, it's quite interesting, we'll talk about this uh, in a while, then there's a breakdown, obviously you need a breakdown, because things can get a bit boring if it keeps repeating, the drop again, and then finally there's an outro. Alright, so let's talk about the different sections, I'll talk about the drums first, So I have a group over here which has all the different drum parts. Now, unlike some other producers, I actually like to I like to keep my drums in the audio domain rather than MIDI, just because it's kind of easier to see where exactly the transients are hitting, and I can make sure that it aligns to everything I want it to align to. Um, I only have one kick drum. Let's solo it over here. I generally tend to layer kick drums, but this kick sounded pretty good as is, especially in the mix, so I decided to keep it. Of course, there is some processing. You can see some heavy heavy uh, EQing over there and then some pretty heavy compression as well. Probably I could compare the un-EQed and uncompressed versus EQed and compressed. So I don't know if you can notice this in the video, but it definitely cleans out some of that lower mid frequencies. Sounds a bit better. And compression. So not, uh, I don't know if it's that obvious, but it's definitely tighter and uh, a bit louder. So that's the kick, quite uh, simple. What you are probably noticing is if I double click on the region, you'll notice, well not this one, but this little one over here, it's actually been transposed up five semitones. So that does kind of happen with a real drummer as well. So when he's hitting notes, uh, well, hitting the kick drum, really close one after the other. Sometimes one of it could be hit a bit harder than the other. And if you pitch up one of them, it kind of feels like that was played a bit harder than the other. Okay, let's now talk about the snare drums. I have three over here. We listen to them one by one. Quite a lot of reverb there on that one. Here's the second snare. shorter, definitely tighter, and then, well, there's not a snare, but it's a clap sound. And let's hear all of them together. So that's kind of like a, a layering technique. So that's the snare. The, the pattern is actually quite simple. This this drum pattern repeats pretty much throughout the entire song. I've noticed most complex Stro T 
tunes don't have very complex drum patterns. It's just that everything else is very complex. Uh, let's talk about the hi hat. So again, it's a simple pattern. You're hearing that little pitch change again. It's because of the transposition thing, and but the pattern is pretty much the same throughout the entire tune. Let me just solo the entire drum kit so we can hear it together. Of course, there's some fills in here, so I forgot to mention that. Let's look at it. So you can see just a couple of different, again, all audio toms. And a crash as well. So in terms of complexity, that's pretty much as complex as it gets with these storm fills. All right, I do have for one section, I have a percussion track, which is actually not a percussion track, but it's um, claps. Let me see if I can find that. It says percussion over here, there we go. Solo it. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the percussion track. So this is actually a library from uh, a sound library developer named Sound Iron. So they have a little library called Clack, and it has a bunch of different wooden hits, wooden percussion hits, so I decided to use some of those in there. Now this is actually layered with claps. If I can find the clap. Oh, I think it's in my drums. Yeah, here we go. So I've labeled it Chorus Clap. So let's solo both of these together. So that's the chorus clap and the percussion. So it gives it a little bit of that Latin vibe. So let's just hear that section with the drums. So you'll hear there's actually no kick drum in this section. Kind of strange because us uh, usually you would have your chorus to be, you know, the biggest section of your song. But in this tune, I decided to have the chorus, well, not not subdued, but definitely lower in level compared to, or lower in intensity compared to some of the other sections like the drop or even the, uh, the verse, actually. All right, so that's a little bit about the drums. I'm going to now move on to the bass. 